Wow, I think we're live. Bienvenidos y muy buenos días. Hey, good morning. I'm a little bit early, I think. I'm going to hope this works. Uh, a couple of caveats. You may see a really, really confusing uh, infinite screen. If I don't click on the right thing, so bear with me because, uh, wow, I'm new at this. Okay, uh, bien, vamos a empezar a las nueve y media. We're going to start at 9.30. Um, there's going to be some kind of dead air stuff going on here. I'm going to... Uh, forward an email to the folks at Scottsdale so they can see what's happening with this um, and that we're actually broadcasting. Um, and I'm going to wait until, to really start the lesson until 9.30, so I've got some air time here to fill. Um, bear with me, please. I'm going to hit a forward and send this to the powers that be. I hope some of you can join us live today uh, via YouTube. I hope those of you who cannot, and I know you may be busy, Lord knows these are trying times. Um, if you are busy and cannot view it till later, of course, no worries because what would we do without YouTube? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm going to take this kind of dead air time to ask folks to just uh, collect their materials. I'll do a little reminder. I had sent a, an, an email um, to you yesterday. Uh, if you didn't get time to check email, I'm just going to do kind of a bullet point uh, um, thing about, uh, you know, to remind you what kind of things you should have on hand because we're going to do review from last week review the homework exercises, uh, look at uh, a lot of slides and a lot of prompts. We're going to have kind of fake practice, and I promise you next time we do this, it won't be fake practice because I have a better system coming online soon. Here are the things that you should have in front of you today during the live stream now in order to follow along with the greatest ease. You should have a libro you should have your book. Um, you should have your homework page, which was a two exercise item, top part, top part reviewing los meses del año, the months of the year, bottom part reviewing verbos, verbs. A couple of those have some reflexive verbs that may have been stumbling points do not worry, we'll explain all of this. We'll give you all the answers. Um, we are going to need the chart you should see behind me right now, the blue and yellow chart, which is expressing what you like and don't like. Most of this is going to be on using Gustar. Um, we are going to have our little short cheat sheet, which if you were in class, the six brave people who came out to brave COVID-19, this was our little cheat sheet. But again, I gave you a link in the Sunday email. Uh, we will also use the back side to do some practice. Um, and we will, we will, we will, we will, we will also have an additional page to practice gustar, but mainly with verbs. What happens with verbs? Because that's always something that's um, a little bit, a little bit confusing uh, for people. Um, so, aquí vamos. Here we go. Uh, we're going to hope that we've got everything lined up. Uh, ocho minutos. We've got eight minutes till starting time. Um, and 
Oh, what else? I'm sorry. We have some pictures for prompts. We'll be doing lots of things. Mostly we could start a little bit with reviewing La Ropa clothing. And I, um, so I hope you can follow along. Um, this won't be quite as engaging as what we have coming up soon. What we have coming up Zoom is, uh, soon, <laughs> is Zoom. Um, so I'll give you more details about that at 9.30 because I want to give people time to join. I am also a little bit unsure. I'm going to move some things around here. A little bit unsure if I'm going to be able to see your video chat questions, which normally on just a use YouTube channel, I can see off to the side. But um, here I would need different equipment in order to be able to do that. So um, we're going to hope that this works. Excuse me for a quick second. Some things are really important, and today, with making sure that everything is, is working correctly, if I do not have, si no tengo una buena taza de café, estoy perdida. I am lost if I do not have my caffeine fix, so bear with me, folks. Okay. Okay, bueno, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar, we're going to begin. Uh, uh, son las nueve y 
27, son las 9 y 27, it's 9.27, uh, tenemos 3 minutos uh, para empezar, pero voy a empezar ahorita. Um, otra vez, bienvenidos, welcome a uh, esta es la última clase. De, de las clases de invierno. It's our last class of winter session. Um, em, estoy trabajando gratis. I am working for free today. At least I assume I'm not getting paid for today. You know, that's okay. I feel like um, this whole kerfuffle with COVID-19, it has been confusing. It has been scary. It is going to continue to be scary, and we are, many of us, cooped up. And nobody likes this, so you may as well have some time on YouTube to do something kind of fun. Um, we had six folks in class last week. Um, I, I questioned the wisdom of even going in last week, but I did so because I didn't want to disappoint students. I knew some people were going to come. Gracias a ustedes. Thank you to the six of you who did show. And I have to say that Horizon did a super fine job. No jokes. Chet and the guys at Horizon um, last Monday before we officially closed down through Scottsdale. They did a super job cleaning the whole facility. And I'm talking disinfecting. You could smell that it had been disinfected. Everything down to the handles on the chairs the tables, the bathroom doorknobs, every doorknob, every surface that you would have been touched, they thoroughly disinfected before we got there last week, only to find out by 11 a.m. that we were closing anyway. So, gracias, Chet. Thank you, Chet. Um, gracias um, a la ciudad de Scottsdale. Thank you to the city of Scottsdale because you really did uh, go above and beyond. Um, I do not officially know what is going to happen with classes for spring, Abril. If you are signed up, signed up, just stay where you are for now. Um, first five minutes, we're going to do kind of a, a a little bit of talking about uh, what may happen with that because I don't know for sure. Folks are still signed up officially. The word from Scottsdale officially is that spring classes are on, but of course depending on what happens with the governor, depending on what happens with the city of Scottsdale, depending on what happens with ultimately this whole pandemic situation and none of us has control over it, you know? Um, I kind of feel like we all have to hang loose. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. I am gonna ask Scottsdale that we can continue having these classes via um, video conferencing because I really think people need this. You know, if you don't want to do it through video conferencing, that's your choice. I would ask you to try it once and to try it next week because uh, we're going to talk in a minute about how this is going to change. The broadcast you're seeing today, I probably spent 20 hours learning the software for. I am really bad with technology. There are many of you who are much more facile, much quicker with technology than I am. Um, and so I have to tell you, it was a chore to learn to use both YouTube with this other program. And the other program is called OBS. You don't want to know technically what it does. It'll, it allows me to show you the screens like the blue and, and yellow screen behind me. Uh, it allows me to pull up anything from my files to show them to you in the background and have me be the teeny tiny talking head. And while this works, and while it is great, what I have found in the meantime is uh, something that the whole rest of the world knows about, which is Zoom, Z-O-O-M, spelled just like you think it should be. Um, when I continue this, I'm going to continue it using Zoom, and here is why. Uh, the fee for me to join and become a host for Zoom video conferencing is not expensive per month. It has way more features than this, 
it is extremely easy for you as the student and it's just got loads of options. Um, I will send you a, um, an email uh, sometime later today. It's going to have either one or two links for videos on how to use Zoom. And you will not have to watch all the video. You'll only have to watch the part of the video that talks about what you do as a participant. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you like, um, you know, timestamps for which parts of the video to watch. Um, the beauty of Zoom, which I found out about because my daughter is using Zoom right now for her Spanish class at ASU, um, she also used it for her German class. Um, my niece, who's a linguistics major at University of Florida, is using Zoom for her Portuguese class right now. The beauty of Zoom is it is true video conferencing. So as opposed to you being on this, and typing me questions, which because of my funky screen setup and my slow computer, I cannot read right now, but continue to in the chat box do that because I'll answer anything. Anyway, um, with Zoom, you will get an invitation from me to join into the video conferencing. You can choose to, uh, you know, you'll see people on the screen. It will be like us being in a virtual room. You can choose to have your audio on, but to not broadcast your picture on Zoom. Maybe you're in your PJs. You've got that right. <laughs> and you'll be able to, you know, be shown with your face or not have your screen shown and just have your voice show up. You will be able to have a chat room like YouTube does. That's great. Um, you will be able to actually verbally ask me questions as opposed to typing questions, which is another option. Um, I will have the ability, and here is the huge plus, I will be able with Zoom to put you out into little uh, virtual rooms. They call them breakout rooms. Uh, and what will happen is the video conferencing software will split you into pairs like I do in class so that you can have your practice uh, pages and practice with an actual partner. Um, this for language teachers is the big big benefit of Zoom. I can teach you, I can show you my slides, uh, you can ask me questions verbally and by typing them, you can get together in breakout rooms and speak with people in groups of two, three, whatever. Uh, and the final coup de grace, the final thing is, it will allow me to save these recordings so that again, you'll be able to watch these videos later on if you're not able to be there live live in the video conference. So next week, um, I'm going to start Zoom. Uh, I'm going to get my account set up. We'll do a quickie trial run. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll do a quickie trial run with my family, who will be the guinea pigs for the first one, so nobody has to see that. <laughs> and, um, and then we'll upload it so you can see. If you are the type of person who is great with software, you will not have to think even twice about how to use this. It's going to be very intuitive, super easy to figure out. If you are the type of person who is totally petrified by, or by, by technology, and I am somewhere in the middle of those two extreme groups, love it, I'm really bad at it, I'm in the middle. Um, even if you're really bad with it, it is not hard to use. Uh, what will happen is that you will get an invitation from me to join the um, video link for, to do the video conference. Um, anyway, explanations on that later. Um, it does help to download the app. I know as participants in Zoom, you guys will be able to use it on your computer or on uh, a cell phone. So I know some of my students 
might be on the park, might be um, waiting in meetings, and they may want to, uh, you know, use a phone as opposed to a computer. So uh, I have even heard, although I'm not sure that you can use a Kindle to access it, so I don't want to swear to the Kindle thing, but this is what I have seen. So Brave New World, I get to learn lots of things. I want to make it as easy for you guys as possible. And, and believe me that even if you're not comfortable with technology, Zoom will be super easy to get accustomed to. Um, okay, muy bien. Vamos a empezar. We're going to start. Um, we're going to start with a review. A review of our... Um, homework from uh, from last week. Our homework from last week was a page that the top half works on los meses del año, months of the year. And we're going to take a look at answers for that because I'm sure some of you have questions about what are the answers. So we're going to go to a blank screen and I'm going to type in the answers. I'm going to, you know, read all, actually I'm going to type along as we go. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to just check and make sure this is showing up on the screen. Yes, it is. I'm going to flip back. Yay. Okay. I'm going to type out the answers for these. I am hoping they're going to be big enough. I'm going to switch back and forth to see that my number is big enough. Yes, I think you can read that. Okay. Numero uno. Dice aquí. It says here. Dice. Dice aquí. It says here. Completa la fras las frases con los meses del año. Complete the sentences with the months of the year. Uh, número uno es el primer uh, mes del año es whoop, the first month of the year is enero. Enero. Y enero con letra minúscula with a lowercase letter. In some countries, the standard is kind of changing. Some places, especially Chile, places like that in South America, you will, might see a capital E for Enero. Uh, technically, that's not all accepted all over. Lowercase e is better. Enero. El primer mes del año es Enero. The first month of the year is January. Número dos. El último, último es como en inglés, ultimate, no, pero último y uh, quiere decir, it means quiere decir last. El último mes del año es, claro, diciembre. El último mes del año es diciembre. The last month of the year is December. Muy bien, número tres. El mes más corto. El mes más corto. Uy, perdón. Del año. Es el mes más corto. Corto, 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 short. El mes más corto del año es febrero. Febrero. Generalmente, este año no, pero generalmente el mes de febrero tiene 28 años. Este año, 29, oh, per, perdón, 28 días, 28 días uh, en general. Este año, 2020, en este año de 2020, el mes de febrero uh, tenía, ja, tenía uh, 29 días. 29 días, pero generalmente tiene 28 días. Muy bien. Número 4. En España. En España. En Spain. En España el invierno termina... El 21 de, el 21 de, el 21 de marzo, el 21 de marzo, 
termina, termina, terminate, ends, finishes. En España el invierno termina el 21 de marzo. Deben preguntarse, you may ask yourself, uh, ¿por qué dicen en España? Why is, ¿Por qué es importante? ¿Por qué es importante en España? Why is it important to include in Spain? In much of the Spanish-speaking world, of course, South America, they have the inverse, the opposite of our seasons. So their spring is our fall. Their summer is our winter. That's why they use in España for that. Okay. In uh, Europa. Uy, a ver, perdón. Me equivoqué. I goofed up. En Europa, el verano termina el 21 de... En Europa, el verano termina el 21 de, de septiembre, creo, ¿no? Septiembre. En septiembre, oficialmente, sí. El fin de verano es septiembre. Agosto, todo el mes de agosto es verano y una parte de, de septiembre a uh, seis los meses que tienen a uh, 31 días o oh, no perdón 30 30 30 días uh oh now i'm gonna feel like the fourth grader who does not know this son los meses que tienen 30 días son, ah, uh, uh, bien, son a uh, abril, enero no, febrero no, marzo no, abril, junio, ah, um, hmm, pues, junio no, julio no, agosto no, septiembre, septiembre, a uh, noviembre y eso es creo que sí I think so a uh, los meses que tienen 31 días 31 días 31 days son enero a uh, uh, enero febrero marzo mayo Julio, julio no, sí, creo que sí, julio, agosto, a uh, octubre y diciembre, ¿verdad? Creo que sí, I think so, espero que sí, I hope so. Uh, fíjense mis estudiantes, please notice students, los meses que tienen, que, que there does not mean que like what, that word what, que. It is spelled the same, que. It sounds the same, que. But here the que means that or which. Entonces, so, uh, los meses que tienen 30 días. Los meses que tienen 31 días. The months that have 30 days. The months that have 31 days. Bien. Vale, magnífico. Número 8. Número 8. Halloween. Halloween. Es el 31 de octubre, claro. Número 9. La Navidad. La Navidad. Nativity. En inglés se dice Christmas, ¿no? La Navidad es el 25 de diciembre. Y por fin, a número 10, el día. El día más largo del año. Oh, oh. El día más largo del año en España... Es el 21 de... el 21 de junio, ¿no? Junio. Otra... el día más largo. Más largo. The longest. 
Largo no es large. Es un cognado falso. It's a false cognate. Largo no es large. Es long. Largo. Uh, el día más largo del año en España es el 21 de junio. El 21 de junio. Uh, 21st of June. ¿Por qué en España? Again, because of that flipping of the seasons, because the seasons are opposite in South America and so many people who speak Spanish live in South America. Uh, it's important to them to make that distinction. Uh, for us, it's not as big a deal. Okay, vale? We good? Magnifico. Vamos a continuar. We're going to continue. We're going to continue with... We're going to continue with the bottom section. I'm going to fill in. I'm going to read as we go along. Um, la parte al fondo. The part at the bottom. La parte al fondo. Uh, this says conjuga. That means conjugate. Conjuga los verbos en primera persona singular yo. We want you to conjugate all of these for yo. And they give you a variety of verbs to practice. I will fill in and give you some uh, uh, explanations for things that are a little bit odd. El ejercicio tiene la forma de un párrafo. It has the form of a paragraph. Entonces, vamos a ver uh, estas ideas como una continuación de una historia pequeña, una historia pequeña, a short story, ¿sí? En contexto, en contexto. Ok, uh, dice, yo con ser, yo soy, yo soy médico, I am a doctor, soy, la forma de ser para yo es soy, yo soy médico, I am a doctor, y trabajo, Trabajo en las urgencias. Trabajo de, en las urgencias de un hospital muy grande aquí en la capital. I am a doctor and I work in the emergency room. Se dice urgencias, urgencias, emergency room. Urgencias de un hospital muy grande, of a very big hospital. Aquí en la capital, here in the capital. Vale. Es un trabajo muy duro. It's a very hard job. Ay, Dios mío, ahorita sí. Right now, especially so. Especialmente a, ahorita. Vamos a usar tener que. Tener que. Y vamos a escribir tener que en la forma para yo. Tengo que. Tengo que estar aquí a las 7 en punto de la mañana. I have to be here, or there, perdón, allí. Tengo que estar allí. I have to be there. Tengo que. Have to. Tengo que is one of those idioms, modismos, with, esta, uh, with tener. To have to as an obligation. Tener que, and the verb that follows, does not get conjugated. We keep it in the infinitive form, estar. Tengo que estar. I have to be. Tengo que estar aquí a las 7 en punto, 7 a la da, de la mañana, in the morning. Por eso, me levanto. Me levanto. You do not know that me part yet. Me levanto means I get myself up. Levanto by itself would be okay if I were lifting a book or lifting weights. Levanto means to raise, to hold up, to lift up. Me levanto means I'm getting my whole body up. We'll have another lesson for that, hopefully during summer sessions. Me levanto, me levanto, I get up. Por eso me levanto, therefore, por eso. Por eso me levanto a las seis. Me levanto a las seis. We're going to get another one of those odd things with a me word. 
Me ducho, me ducho es I take a shower. Me ducho, tomo un café en casa, tomo un café en casa. I have a coffee. Tomo un café en casa, at home. Y escucho, y escucho las noticias en, el, en la radio. And I listen to news on the radio. Escucho. Ok. Uh, empezamos con voy. Voy. I go. Voy al hospital en metro. Voy a las hospital en metro. I go to the hospital on the subway. En metro. Porque en esta ciudad hay mucho tráfico. Because in this city there is a lot of traffic. Y es imposible llegar en coche. It's impossible to get there by car. Es imposible llegar en coche. Hay una estación cerca de mi casa. There's a station near my house. Allí compro, allí compro los billetes. There I buy the tickets. Billetes para el metro. Billetes, tickets, para el metro. Puedo subway. Uh, llego. I arrive. I get there. Llego al hospital. I get to the hospital. I arrive at the hospital. Llego al hospital a las 7 menos cuarto. A las 7 menos cuarto. Recuerden, 7 menos cuarto es quarter till 7. 7 o'clock minus menos quarter hour. Cuarto is not cua no es cuatro. Cuarto es a quarter hour. 15 minutos, ¿sí? A las 7 menos 15, a las 7 menos cuarto. Así que, so that, así que, so that, así que, bebo, bebo otro café. I drink another coffee con mi compañero Miguel. Y luego entro a trabajar. And later I go in to work. Entro a trabajar, entro. A las doce y media, como un bocadillo. Bocadillo es sandwich. Como un bocadillo. Como un bocadillo en la cafetería del hospital. Ah, necesito un descanso. I need a break. I need a rest. Necesito un descanso porque mi trabajo es muy intenso. Ha, understatement of the year. Mi trabajo es muy in intenso. Y me canso, me canso, me canso es I get tired. That's what the me is about. Me canso. The me ducho, me canso, me levanto. We've got an extra me in there that you don't get with normal verbs. These are what we call reflexive verbs. Technically, it means that the action you do bounces back to you yourself, comes back to you too. That you both do the reaction or do the action and receive the benefit of that action. Uh, so, okay. Me canso. I get tired. Me canso mucho. I get very tired. going to erase some of this so that we can move our text up. Perdón. Okay. We are taking off from Make Council. A la una y media. A la una y media. A la una y treinta. A la una y media. A la una y media regreso. Regreso es I come back. I return. Regresar, regresar es to return. 
A la, a la una y media regreso a las urgencias y termino, termino a las cuatro de la tarde. Termino, I finish, I end up. Termino a las cuatro de la tarde. Si hay algún problema grave, if there is some great problem, todos los días tenemos problemas grandes ahora en los hospitales que hay. Si hay, si hay algún problema gra grave, uh, me quedo, me quedo. Me quedo es I stay. Me quedo es like me canso. Me quedo es like me levanto. Me quedo es like me ducho. Quedar with a me in front of it, me quedo, I stay at. Me quedo allí, I stay there. Me quedo allí hasta las seis. Until six. Ok. Cuando llego a casa, when I get home, cuando llego a casa, descanso, I rest, y ceno con mis padres. And I have dinner with my parents. You may ask, why would a doctor have dinner with his parents? In many Spanish families, especially traditional Spanish families, uh, multi-generations uh, often live in the same house. And if it is a very tall Brooklyn, New York kind of style apartment building, they'll be on different floors of the same house. Um, okay. Después de la cena, after dinner. Después de la cena, miro una película en la tele. Miro una película. I watch a movie en la tele, on the TV. Leo un poco. I read a little bit. O respondo a los emails que recibo. O respondo a los emails que recibo. Or I respond to emails that I receive. Bien? Vale. Si ustedes tienen preguntas, if you guys have questions, put them in the chat room. I cannot see them now because of the number of screens I, ha screens I have to manage. Um, para que sepan so that you know, uh, at the end of the month, I will be getting a new computer, una nueva computadora. Um, es mi regalo de cumpleaños. This is my birthday gift uh, because I need a faster, better computer to be able to do this with you guys and continue doing this. So, um, in April, in April, hopefully, we'll be able to do that. Okay. Está bien. Uh, vamos a ver. I want to get onto my agenda. So bear with me when I check that. There is the homework from the worksheet. Um, quiero que tomen el, el libro de texto ahora. I want you to take the textbook right now. We're going to look through a couple of examples. I already got one email question about the examples in the book. I am not going to read all these pages to you in the book. That's for you to do later. Uh, however, um, ¿Dónde estamos? Uh, if you look in the book and you look for gustar, and our topic is mainly today gustar, you will not find a, a, a chapter on gustar. Uh, you need to be looking for, you need to be looking for, instead of gustar, the chapter 10 called the indirect object. It will hopefully be clear why you need to do that in a minute. En un minuto. Uh, um, abran sus libros, abran sus libros, por favor. En la página 153. 153. I want you to see where this is in the book now. I'm going to give you some time to open up the book. This is the formal, um, and it is all correct. It is the formal information. 153, 154, 
155, 156, 157. It is quite verbose. So I'm not going to read it to you. We're going to go over the highlights together. I'll do some explanations. If you have questions as we move along, feel free to type those in. Again, I won't see them right now because of my goofy computer setup, but I will see them later and answer them later in like a big ass email. Okay. Gustar. Gustar. Uh, it's actually technically a great big fat lie to say that gustar means to like because it does not. <laughs> uh, gustar uh, means to be pleasing. Uh, the very first day when we were in class with Spanish and you learned how to introduce yourself to people. Ah, mucho gusto. Much pleasure. There, gusto is a noun. Mucho gusto, much pleasure. But gustar... Gustar is um, also a verb, and as gustar, it is acting as the verb meaning to be pleasing, to be pleasing. Okay, we're going to take a look at this page, which if you were in class, the six of you who had it, you've got it, it hopefully you've got it either on your computer or printed out. This is our quickie cheat sheet, and later we'll look at the big, nice, prettier blue and yellow page, or my Google Slides. Gustar does not mean to like. It means to be pleasing. Uh, the verb is therefore typically, in a normal conversation, only going to be uh, conjugated two different ways. Because you are always saying in Spanish, this thing, one thing, is pleasing to somebody. Or these things, plural, more than one of them, they are pleasing to somebody. So we will not take gustar, an AR verb, and a regular verb. And we're generally not, most of the time, going to use gusto, most of the time, not using gustas. Those are used, gusto and gustas, kind of in more a, an, an attraction. Pick up line in the bar, you can feel it coming on. <laughs> Do you like me? Hey, I like you. So don't use gusto and gustas, because people will get kind of the wrong impression. And we won't use gustamos. We won't. We are only going to use two conjugations of gustar. Gusta, to say one thing. The thing that is liked determines the, what you use. Gusta or gustan. If the thing you like is a onesie thing, gusta. If the thing you like is an action, an activity, also gusta. If you like doing six activities, gusta. Gusta for onesie, singular things, the thing liked. Gusta for thing liked, <laughs> uh, an activity. And that activity will always be expressed as an infinitive. That means an AR verb, an ER verb, an IR verb. We're going to see how that works in a little bit. Okay. So, normalmente. You're used to these slides, so I can show these to you. You know, you're used to conjugating verbs for yo, for nosotros, for tú. What the heck happens to all those pronouns? Well, we won't use yo and tú. Uh, we're going to use instead these pronouns that you see on the white slide these pronouns are on the left because they will lead off. These are what we use instead of yo and tu and all those other things. Okay? Uh, all the other pronouns, the subject pronouns you were accustomed to. We're going to kind of toss those out of the window for the moment. Okay, so the little pronoun in bold, me, Te, le, nos, les, os only in Spain, solamente en España. 
Os is the plural of te. So we're not really going to look at os. It's there because somebody may ask about it. People who travel to Barcelona for vacation would need to know os. They would hear people using os. But, pero, generalmente, generalmente, por lo general, se usa me, te, le, nos, les. These little pronouns tell who likes something. And the verbs on the right, gusta or gustan, tell uh, or correspond to the thing that is liked or the activity that is liked. So if I like something, I'm going to use me because it's pleasing to me. If you like something, te is the correct pronoun to lead off because something is pleasing to you. If he likes or she likes or the formal you, usted, likes something, we use the pronoun le. If we like something, we will use nos. That nos does not get a period. It is not an abbreviation. It is a little short, different word, different from nosotros. Nos, pleasing to us. Okay. Uh, we like in English. Uh, they like, or you guys, plural, like, we'll use that pronoun les. Excelente. Entonces, so, uh, me, Ooh, I was hoping to highlight that. It's not letting me. Okay, we won't do that. No highlighting. Sorry, guys. Me, te, le, nos, les. We combine that with gusta to say that the thing that is liked is singular or a verb, an action, or a whole series of actions. Any activity, activities, we'll use gusta. Gustan for things that are liked are plural. Let's take a look at our Google Slides. You, If you've got these on a tablet uh, and you can flip between screens, you may want to look at. Otherwise, just check them out on the screen. We're going to look at some examples. And this tells you that there's no true English equivalent, not word for word. This is why you cannot translate literally, really with any language, because there are always anomalies, things that don't follow word for word what you do. All right. Um, this page, uh, I will not read to you except for the bottom. Gustar means to be pleasing. If you say apples are pleasing to me and not I like apples, it would sound super odd to an English speaker. But that's essentially what we're saying. Let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, this slide, and you can refer to it later, it talks to you about... Um, Again, how gusta reflects the thing that is liked and the pronoun will not be yo or tú or nosotros, okay? Um, typically, beginning students want to conjugate this like they conjugate hablo, vivo, escribo, uh, escucho. Do not say me gusta. It means I am pleasing to myself, which sounds really weird. And people will think, okay, how do I respond to this? So, no me gusta, please. <laughs> um, okay. Let's check this out. This shows you the combinations. How do you express who likes something? Now we're going to with this slide, kind of slip in a little bit of extra information. You're going to see some short, short phrases, all beginning with the word a. Ah. A ah means two. These little short parentheses phrases are optional. They are not required. You don't have to use them. Uh, but Sometimes they are used to emphasize, to give a little extra punch to the idea of I like. In English, we do this by saying, um, mm, voy a comparar, I'm going to compare, voy a comparar, 
Ah, voy a comparar un momentito. Voy a comparar Me gusta, me gusta la naranja, me gusta la naranja, me gusta la naranja. I like the orange, okay? In English you might say I like the orange. You might in English say I like the orange, meaning like probably more than something else. I like the orange. If you want to give that idea of emphasis, we do that in English with raising, changing, uh, the, the, the tone of our voice. Oh, I like the orange. In Spanish, you do that, oh, I like it, by saying, a mi me gusta, a mi me gusta, a mi me gusta, a mi me gusta la naranja, a mi me gusta. That gives it more emphasis. It is perfectly okay to omit, omit, not use the a mi. Me gusta la naranja? Perfecto. Perfect. But if the thing I like is plural, plátanos, los plátanos, me gustan, me gustan los plátanos. Me gustan los plátanos. Literally, to me, they are pleasing bananas. A mí me gustan las, los plátanos. Gustan because it's more than one banana. Bananas in general. Está bien? Okay. If I want to be really emphatic, a mí me gustan las bananas, a mí me gustan los plátanos. Igual. Okay. Especially for the, uh, uh, oh, whoop, we're going to look over to the side. A nosotros nos gusta, or a nosotros nos gustan. You can omit the a nosotros and just say it as nos gusta or nos gustan. We're going to look at the second line. To be emphatic, you can include an a ti. A ti te gusta, a ti te gustan. I can omit the a ti. Te gusta? Te gusta. The vosotros line will skip. You can take a look at it if you like. Le and les are kind of problematic sometimes. Le gusta or le gustan can mean he likes or she likes, or you, usted, the formal you, like. In the context of a conversation, it will probably be clear to somebody who you mean by le. If I'm talking about, I have a young son, he is five years old, tengo un hijo, Muy joven, mi hijo, eh, muy joven, tiene cinco años. Le gusta, le gusta, le gusta su perro. He likes his dog. You know I'm talking about my kid because I'm talking about, I have a kid, he's five years old, he likes his dog. So you know from the context of the previous sentences. I mean, le gusta means he likes. But out of context, if somebody is unsure that you, the listener, understand who they mean with using that word le, they will probably be likely to include an a with a name. Okay, an a with a human being to tell you who they mean by le to indicate if it means he likes, or she likes, or you formal. Okay, en otras palabras, a él, he, a él le gusta, he likes, a él le gusta, a ella le gusta, she likes, a Luisa le gusta, Luisa likes, a usted le gusta, do you like? Okay, bien? So, le, because it is fuzzy, 
because it has three possibilities a single male person a single female person a you formal you person they may include that a ah, with the name of a person or a ah, with a pronoun that is called a clarifying phrase doesn't matter that you know that just know that the a ah and the name will be more specific to tell you who we mean by le that same process may happen with the word les les gusta les gustan are okay by themselves they may be obvious from the context of the conversation les gusta les gustan they like could mean you guys like if the speaker isn't clear that you understand that he will say to you his listener an ah phrase to lead it off to define who he needs by that word les a uh, a uh, mis amigos les gusta my friends like a uh, ustedes les gusta you guys like a uh, ellos les gusta they like a uh, ellas les gusta they all female group like a uh, mis hermanas les gusta my sisters like okay so it's always correct to use only me te le nos les with the verb gusta or with the verb gusta the a uh, with a little pronoun may be a an emphatic or a clarifying uh, addition to the sentence okay how does this work all together? Let's look at examples. Anytime you see something in parentheses, guys, with my me gusta or te gusta sentences, that means the phrase in parentheses is optional. Me gusta el tenis is okay by itself. Literally, tennis is pleasing to me. You would never say that in English because it just sounds weird in English. En inglés se dice, I like tennis. En español se dice, me gusta el tenis. If I wanted to be really emphatic, a mí me gusta el tenis. A mí me gusta el tenis. Okay? El segundo ejemplo, second example. Me gustan los deportes. Me gustan los deportes. I like sports. Uh, a mí me gustan los deportes. I can include an a mí. I can drop the a mí. A mí me gustan los deportes. Me gustan los deportes. Ah, ¿Te gusta nadar? You like to swim. Swimming, it's an activity, so it's a onesie thing. Ah, ¿Te gusta nadar? You like to swim. A ti te gusta la nadar just makes it more emphatic. A ti te gusta nadar. Ah, ¿Te gustan los perros? You like dogs. In general, as a pet category, you like all dogs in general. Te gustan los perros. We do need to include the los here. We drop that in English. You like dogs. And you mean all of them. Dogs as a general category. But we need that word los if we're going to say this. Uh, ¿Te gustan los perros? Or, ¿a ti te gustan los perros? Uh, ok. Un ejemplo, he likes. A Luis. A Luis le gusta el vino. Or just, le gusta el vino. If somebody understands ahead of time you're talking about Luis, just, le gusta el vino is enough. Le gustan las uvas. Uvas, grapes. Le gustan las uvas. She likes grapes. A ella, a ella, a ella le gustan las uvas. We need a gustan. Gustan tells us that the thing that is liked is uvas, grapes, more than one thing. Okay. Bien. Más, más ejemplos. Let's look at some more examples. 
No nos gusta fumar. If we want to make it a negative, I don't like, we just stick a no in front of the me, te, le, les, or nos. We just stick a no in front. No nos gusta fumar. We don't like to smoke. And fumar stays fumar. No nos gusta fumar. A nosotros no nos gusta fumar just makes it emphatic. Okay. We like strawberries. Nos gustan las fresas. If I want to be super clear and tell who's in that group that I define as nos, I might say a Pepe y a mí. A Pepe y a mí nos gustan las fresas. Joe and I. That's who we are. A Pepe y a mí nos gustan las fresas. Strawberry, strawberries are pleasing. Gustan las fresas. Nos gustan las fresas. Okay. Les gusta la ciudad. The city is pleasing to them. Ciudad is one thing, so it gets the verb gusta. And who likes it is les. A ellos les gusta la ciudad. They like the city. Below that, we've got a you guys example. Les gustan los carros alemanes. You guys like German cars. If it's not clear that the les means you guys, we really need to lead off with an a ustedes to make that word less clear. Or, excuse me, that word, that word less more clear. <laughs> uh, a ustedes les gustan los carros alemanes. And gustan is plural not because of les. Gustan is plural because of los carros alemanes, German cars. A ustedes les gustan los carros alemanes. Okay? And again, we've got on our slide, the a phrase is optional. The pronoun plus the verb gustar, those two elements, they are essential. They are must-haves for somebody to understand what you're saying. So think of these always as a block of words. Me gustan las naranjas. I like oranges. ¿Te gusta montar en bici? Do you like to ride a bike? A Ramón le gustan las playas de Hawaii. Does Ramón like beaches in Hawaii? Nos gusta comer los postres. We like to eat desserts. Now I'm going to point this one out because this is going to come up in some of the examples you see in the book in just a bit. Nos gusta comer los postres. Wait a minute, I'm scratching my head here. Los postres means desserts. Isn't that plural? Why isn't that gustan? Here the word comer uh, kind of takes precedence. What we like, if I said I, uh, we like desserts, it would correctly be nos gustan los postres. But this is not saying we like desserts. This is saying we like to eat desserts. And the to eat is what we're using as our tagline, our grab, grab it idea. So if it's an infinitive, comer, even though I've got los postres, a plural thing there, we go to that activity, singular, gusta, verb. Nos gusta comer los postres. We like to eat desserts. Uh, a Catalina y a Juan les gusta viajar. Catalina and Juan like to travel. Okay? The pronoun tells who likes something. Gustar corresponds to the thing or things liked. A ver. Normally I would give you a pause because we're about at the one hour mark. I'm not sure if we're going to fill the second hour. We'll get as close as we can to that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit in case some of you need to take a minute break to use the restroom, do whatever. Necesito tomar 
Cafeína, I need to have some caffeine. When we start up in a moment, we're going to look back at some exercises in the book. They're pretty short ones, but we're going to review these and hopefully explain some questions that people emailed me about this weekend. Um, so we're going to give you a moment. Uh, after that, we're going to do some uh, practice with various pages. which I will try to toggle between. Bear with me a moment. I'm going to use a moment, and some of you are taking a little bit of a break, to find some references here. No, vamos a empezar. Let's start up. Um, abran los libros, por favor. Abran los libros en la página 158. 158. We're going to take a look at ejercicio 10.1, 10.1, 10.1, 10.1 y 10.2. We had some questions on these this weekend, and hopefully when we go through this, you'll, you'll understand it a little bit better. If not, type your questions in the chat or email me later. Here we go, 10.1. Um, I will just pronounce these so that you can see. This is a setup to get you used to the patterns. Pronounce the examples aloud so that you can become familiar with the sound. Singular subject, meaning a one thing is pleasing to somebody. And uh, I'm going to read straight down uh, the list. Me gusta el hotel. From top to bottom. Me gusta el hotel. I like the hotel. Te gusta la clase. You like the class. Le gusta el libro. He likes the book or she likes the book. You'll notice there. I have no context of a conversation. So I don't know if that le means he likes or she likes or you form a like. Nos gusta la comida. We like the food. Les gusta el programa. They like the program. Oh, that could mean you guys like the program. Again, I have no context with this example. We're going to look at the middle column. Uh, again, a singular subject. Me gusta viajar. I like to travel. Te gusta correr. You like to run. Le gusta escribir. He likes to write or she likes to write or you, formal, one person like to write. Nos gusta comer. We like to eat. Les gusta leer. They like to read. Or you guys like to read. Now the last column. We've got plural subjects. So you'll notice the very last word in the sentence is always a plural thing. That's why these are all going to be gustan. Gustan, then N at the end. Me gustan los hoteles. I like hotels. Te gustan las clases. You guys like classes. Le gustan los libros. They like books. Or excuse me, uh, he likes books or she likes books or you formal like books. Nos gustan las comidas. We like the meals. Les gustan los programas. They like the programs, the shows. You guys like the programs, the shows. Okay. Bien. Uh, vamos a ver. Let's see. Ejercicio 10.2. 1.2. They're going to give you a cue at the beginning in parentheses. That cue... 
whoever is in the phrase in parentheses in 10.2, that tells you who likes something. So the directions say, complete the following sentences. Choose the correct indirect object pronouns. That means me or te or le or nos or les. Um, as indicated by prepositional phrases. So whatever is in in between parentheses, that's your cue for do I choose me or te or le or les or nos. And then we're going to have to choose either gusta or gustan. The gusta or the gustan will not depend on who likes the thing. It will depend on what it is, the thing that somebody likes. Okay, ejemplos, examples they give us at the top before we have to actually do this are me gusta el helado because we have the a mi, it must be me. Me gusta. I like ice cream. Helado is one thing. So it's me gusta el helado. A él le gustan las galletas. Las galletas son cookies. Le gustan. Le tells that he likes it. Gustan tells that the thing is liked is more than one. Galletas, cookies. Le gustan las galletas. A nosotros nos gusta el postre. Postre es dessert. A nos gusta el postre. Nos is pleasing to us. Gusta. El postre determines that it must be gusta. El postre es one thing. Singular. Ok. Bien. Los ejemplos. Let's start with... Vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con número uno. Número uno. A mí me gusta el café con azúcar. Me gusta, me gusta el café con azúcar. I like coffee with sugar. A ella le gusta, le gusta, le gusta el café negro. Le gusta el café negro. She likes black coffee. By the way, most countries I've been in, uh, people like to use the phrase, instead of café negro, which means black coffee, and that, you know, wow, yeah, that's logical. Café solo. Café solo means coffee by itself. You know, whatever the strongest form is, you're not adding sugar, you're not adding cream. Para que sepan, just so you know. El café negro, el café solo. Solo. Le gusta. Café is one thing, so le gusta, le tells you it's a ella, she likes. A María le gusta el té, le gusta el té, le gusta, le gusta, she likes tea. A mí me gusta escribir libros, me gusta escribir libros. I know libros is plural, but what I like is not books, but writing books. So writing, escribir, is a verb. And that activity, that verb, that infinitive, it trumps everything else. We have to use gusta with an infinitive, an activity. Me gusta escribir. Me gusta escribir libros. Okay? Número cinco, number five. A mis amigos les gusta, les gusta cocinar. Les gusta cocinar. They like to cook. Ok. Número 6. Number 6. A Susana y a Miguel. We've got a they group. A Susana y a Miguel les gusta viajar. Les gusta viajar. They like to travel. Número siete. A ellos. There's our prompt. Les gusta comer en buenos restaurantes. Les gusta comer. They like to eat. En buenos restaurantes in starts a prepositional phrase. En and everything that follows it does not figure into do I use gusta or do I use gustan. We look at comer, an activity, and we say, aha, gusta, singular. 
les gusta comer. They like to eat. A mí me gusta ir al teatro. A mí me gusta ir al teatro. I like to go to the theater. Número nueve. A ti te gusta ir al cine. You like to go to the movies. Te gusta ir. Número diez. A nosotros nos gusta salir los sábados. Nos gusta. Nos gusta salir. We like to go out. We like to go out. Salir es infinitivo. Es actividad. Because salir is an activity that says, aha, I need to use gusta. Nos gusta salir. The los sábados, we're not saying uh, we like Saturdays as opposed to Sundays or Mondays. We're saying we like to go out. And the los sábados is just telling you when. On Saturdays. Nos gusta salir los sábados. Vale, número once. A Guillermo. Guillermo es William. Bill, Guillermo. A Guillermo le gustan los restaurantes japoneses. He likes Japanese restaurants. Le gustan los restaurantes japoneses. Plural thing, restaurantes japoneses. Ok. Doce. A su amiga. Her friend. We need uh, the word le to convey that prompt of a su amiga. Le gustan, le gustan los restaurantes franceses. Le gustan los restaurantes, oh, perdón, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, le gustan los restaurantes hindúes, <laughs> hindú. Le gustan los restaurantes hindúes. She likes Hindu restaurants. She likes Indian food. Okay. Trece, thirteen. I got mixed up in my sequence. Perdón. A, a ustedes. A ustedes, that tells who likes. We need the word les, the little pronoun les. Les gustan. Les gustan los restaurantes franceses. Les gustan los restaurantes franceses. You guys like French restaurants. Catorce. A mí me gustan. Me gustan las playas del Caribe. I like the beaches of the Caribbean. Me gustan playas, plural. Me gustan las playas del Caribe. 15, 15. A ti te gustan las piscinas grandes. You like big pools, not teeny, teeny, tiny pools. Te gustan las piscinas grandes. Número 16, number 16. A tu hermana is our prompt. We need the pronoun le. Le gusta la ciudad. Le gusta la ciudad. She likes the city. 17. 17. Our prompt is al hermano de José, Joe's brother. Al hermano de José, Joe's brother. We need the pronoun le. We're talking about one guy, Joe's brother. Le gusta el campo. El campo es the countryside. Uh, the outdoors, if you will. Le gusta el campo. Le gusta el campo. Uh, dieciocho. A nosotros. There's our prompt. We need the pronoun nos. Nos gusta viajar. Nos gusta viajar. We like to travel. Diecinueve. A Cecilia y a su familia. It's a they group. We need the pronoun les. Les gusta conversar. Les gusta conversar. They like to converse, to talk back and forth. Ah, número 20. 20. Our prompt is a los niños. 
group of kids, more than one, we need the pronoun les. Les gusta aprender todo. Les gusta aprender todo. They like to learn everything. Todo. 28, número 28, oh, perdón, 28, no, 21, 21, 21 a los adolescentes. Adolescentes, adolescents, teenagers. A los adolescentes, plural. We need a plural group. We need a they pronoun, les. Les gusta, uh, importante, les gusta jugar. They like to play. What do they like to play? Sports, deportes. We're not saying they like sports. They like to play sports. Les gusta jugar deportes. They like to play, to play sports. The infinitive jugar, actividad, takes precedence and indicates we need that verb gusta. Okay. 22, el último, last one. Our prompt is a ustedes. You guys, we need the pronoun les. Les. Alcalde is mayor. Mayor of your city, okay. <laughs> les gusta el alcalde de su ciudad. Les gusta el alcalde. Les gusta. Alcalde is one. Thing. Not my favorite example, but there you go. Okay. Do not go yet unless you're really intellectually curious and you just can't stop yourself. Do not move on to pages 150 or 160, 160, 162. Those pages actually, in a libro, those pages are important. You should know, but we're not going to practice it yet. We'll do it another session. There are a lot of verbs that behave like gustar. I will give you only one example. In other words, these verbs won't be conjugated for yo and tú and nosotros. They'll be conjugated like gusta, gustan. The other verb, which is pretty closely related to gustar, uh, wow, allow me to get my examples page. Take a look. Um, another verb that is like gustar is encantar. You remember again for when we introduced ourselves, you said encantado, delighted to meet you. And that verb encantar comes from the same thing that encantado came from, okay? Encantar, encantar means to enchant. That would sound formal and weird and bizarre in English. It means to delight. To delight. Uh, to delight still sounds maybe a little bit formal and strange to the English ear. Here's what we do in English really use to say that thing. To love. To love a thing. Not to love your husband, not to love your wife, not to love your partner, not to love, um, not to love your pet, not to love your kids, not to love a human being. To love a thing. To love doing something. When, when you want to bump it up, jack it up from gustar, to say not that you like something, but that you're wild about it, instead of gustar, you use encantar. So that means encantar gets only two conjugations. Encanta, if you like a singular, if you love, not like, if you love. A singular thing or encantan if you love a plural thing okay 
but we still use those little pronouns of me, or te, or le, or nos, or les, in front of the word encanta, in front of the word encantan. Okay, por ejemplo, por ejemplo. Ah, uh, ooh. Oh, mi gatita, mi gatita no quiere estar aquí. If she wants to jump on the table, she doesn't want to be with me. Uh, and now she's run away. That'll cure her. Okay. I love my cat. I love my cat. You might say, ah, mejor, better. I want to talk about all cats, not my pet, because for that I wouldn't use Encanta necessarily. Um, I want to say, I love all cats. I'm a cat person. I'm not a cat person, but you know, my daughter's a cat person. Let's talk about my daughter. A Maria. A Maria. Ooh. A Maria. A Maria. Le encantan los gatos. She loves cats. Not just her pets, all cats. Doesn't matter what kind of cat. Le encantan los gatos. Uh, o, otro ejemplo. Um, nos encanta uh, aprender el español. Nos encanta aprender el español. We love learning Spanish. Nos encanta aprender el español. O, oh, por ejemplo, a... Uh, I am tired of my wardrobe. I'm really sick of it. Ah, uh, pero, but, me encanta la ropa nueva. I love new clothes. Aimelda Marcos. I know she's dead. Bear with me. Aimelda Marcos. Le encantan los zapatos. Imelda Marcos loves shoes. Hundreds and hundreds of shoes. Le encantan los zapatos. Can't pass up a pair of shoes. Así es. So encantar, which is something we'll leave for another lesson, behaves just like gustar. Okay, a ver. Uh, let's see. Ooh, we're doing well on time. Vamos a ver. Uh, we're going to take a look at some examples. And bear with me because... Uh, these come from some of the pair practice, but unfortunately, in my foggy, I'm concerned about COVID mind, I may have printed the wrong page. I don't remember. And I have many, many practice pages. So I'm hoping if this is the right one, if this is not the right one that you have, uh, just check out the screen. Okay. Uh, next time we meet, we will have Zoom. And it will allow you to have, uh, to print off your page or maybe to look on, you know, a tablet on a different screen, flip the screen to your practice page and to practice with an actual partner in a breakout room. And because we don't have this today, it will feel hmm, poco natural, little natural, meaning not natural at all. <laughs> uh, but it will help. I'm going to use some prompts. So check out the screen. Si quiero decir, hoy, donde está la foto? Here, aquí viene, here it comes. Wow. La computadora necesita cafeína también. It's taking some time to think. Si quiero, de, si quiero decir, if I want to say, si quiero decir, 
Uh, I like to swim in the ocean. I like to swim. Nadar es una actividad. Se expresa, se expresa, sí. Uh, me gusta, me gusta nadar en el océano. Me gusta nadar en el océano. I like to swim in the ocean. Me gusta nadar. A mí me gusta nadar en el océano. Bien. Vale. Por ejemplo, miren. Momentito. Los carros deportivos. Deportivos quiere decir sports. Sporty. Super duper fast. Los carros deportivos. Si quiero expresar George, George likes sports cars. He likes sports cars. Le gustan, le gustan los carros deportivos. O a Jorge, a Jorge, to define, a Jorge le gustan los carros deportivos. A Jorge le gustan los carros deportivos. He likes sports cars. Ok. Si quiero hablar... If I want to talk, si quiero hablar de, de, si quiero hablar de ti, if I want to talk about you, and you're my friend, and you're my bud, and I want to say, you like exotic flowers, las flores exóticas, las flores exóticas, you like exotic flowers. Te gustan, te gustan las flores exóticas. If I want to make it emphatic, a ti, a ti te gustan las flores exóticas. Bien. A ver. Si quiero hablar. Here's a beverage that's really, really important these days. La cerveza. Ha. Beer. Let's make it more special. La cerveza alemana. German beer. Not just any old beer. La cerveza alemana. Okay. My friends like German beer. As a general rule. Because they're beer snobs. Kind of like wine snobs. They like German beer. They don't like Mexican beer. They don't like Detroit beer. They don't like Canadian beer. They like German beer. But they like German beer as a general rule. Okay, so my friends like it. Les gusta. Les gusta la cerveza alemana. Les gusta la cerveza alemana. They like German beer. And I have to express, express it. In English, I would just say they like German beer. We need to use that the word, the la. In Spanish, we need to use this. The la word tells the listener this is a big category of things. Every single brand of German beer, that's what they like. Les, les gusta la cerveza alemana. If you don't know who I mean by les, I may need to include an a phrase before the word les. So I might need to say, a mis amigos, my buds. A mis amigos les gusta la cerveza alemana. ¿Vale? Ok. Vamos a hablar... Uh, vamos a hablar de algo... De algo... Un recuerdo alegre. Un recuerdo mag, magnífico de la juventud. A wonderful memory of youth. Regalos de Navidad. Los regalos de Navidad. Christmas presents. Plural. Si quiero decir, if I want to say, the little kid. 
The little kid likes Christmas presents. The little kid. Le gustan, le gustan los regalos de Navidad. Le gustan los regalos de Navidad. You don't know who I mean by le. I want to be specific. The kid. I start with al niño. Al niño. Al niño le gusta los, oh, perdón. Al niño le gustan los regalos de Navidad. Al niño le gustan los regalos de Navidad. Bien. Uh, por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Uh, estoy con mi amiga. Estoy. Voy de compras. De compras shopping. Voy de compras con mi amiga. I go shopping with my friend. Voy de compras con mi amiga. Y, uh, mira, tenemos un precio. We've got a price tag here. Un precio. I want to say, uh, the woman likes her new dress. Her new dress, the word her is su. It has no gender. Wow. Que facil. It has no gender. You don't have to think about masculine and feminine. Su vestido nuevo. Her new dress. I want to say she likes her new dress. Le gusta su vestido nuevo. You don't know who I mean by le gusta? I put in a phrase before I get to the word le. A la mujer. A la mujer, the woman. A la mujer le gusta su vestido nuevo. Vale? Bien. Okay. Ooh. Algo muy interesante. Si quiero expresar el amor que tengo. El amor que tengo cuando estoy pensando en el chocolate. The feeling I have for chocolate. Yeah. Okay. El chocolate. I know you see lots of little bits of chocolate. But if I'm talking about chocolate as a category of a food group. <laughs> it's one of the food groups in the pyramid. I wish. Uh, okay. I want to say everybody everybody, all of them, they like all of them. They like chocolate. Chocolate is one thing, so I've got to use gusta with el chocolate. But I want to say all of them, they like it. Les gusta el chocolate. Les gusta el chocolate. And it isn't clear who you mean by les. I want to say all of them. Every single person in that group over there. A todos. A todos, everybody, a todos les gusta el chocolate. A todos les gusta el chocolate. Bien? Ok. Vale. Uh, algo nuevo. Something new. Un programa. Programa, I know it en, termina en A, ends in an A, but it's not feminine. No, a, Programa no es palabra femenina. No, no, no. Un programa. Así es. It's one of the exceptions. Un programa. Quiero decir, quiero expresar, we like the show. Or, excuse me, we like to watch the show. Y debo escribir, I should write in here, ver. We like to watch. A show. Ah. Perdón. I'm getting dyslexic as well. Ver un programa. Ver un programa actividad. We like this activity. Nos gusta, nos gusta ver un programa. Nos gusta ver un programa. 
I could be emphatic. A nosotros nos gusta ver un programa. I could leave it just as nos gusta ver un programa. If I cut out the ver, it would still be gusta. Nos gusta un programa. No importa. It doesn't matter there. It's the same way either, either way. Okay. Otro ejemplo. Otro ejemplo. Programa, programa. Oh. Una comida. Una comida latina muy, muy típica. Una, una comida muy típica en todo el mundo hispano, en todo el mundo latino. Es... Ja, los frijoles. Frijoles. Frijoles beans. You never eat one bean. Los frijoles. Ok. ¿Cómo se dice, por ejemplo, cómo se dice, we like beans? Nos gustan los frijoles. Gustan is plural, not because of the nos, because of, but it's plural because of los frijoles. Nos gustan los frijoles. If I want to say, ha, huh, we like beans, a nosotros nos gustan los frijoles. Bien, vale. Aún mejor que, aún mejor que los frijoles, even better than frijoles, el helado, el helado. Aquí tenemos una foto, el, el helado vainilla, oh, de sabor eh, uh, vainilla, vanilla ice cream, ok, el helado. Quiero expresar you, my friend, you like ice cream. Te gusta el helado. Te gusta el helado. You like ice cream. You like all ice cream. Te gusta el helado. Ok. Ah, en fact, a ti te gusta. A ti te gusta el helado. Bien. Otro ejemplo. Otro ejemplo. El té. El té. Y aquí tenemos una foto, una foto de una taza, una taza, no de café, una taza de té. Bien. Quiero expresar, quiero expresar, you guys like tea. Les gusta el té. Les gusta el té. El té caliente. Hot tea. El té caliente. Mejor dicho. Better expressed. El té caliente. ¿Verdad? Les gusta el té caliente. If it is not clear who I mean by les, I need to tag on at the very beginning an a ustedes phrase. A ustedes les gusta el té caliente. Bien. Quizás, maybe. Quizás. Ustedes prefieren el té helado. Maybe you don't like your tea hot. Maybe you like your tea chilled. Helado is ice cream, but helado here is a descriptor. Helado here is not ice cream. Helado here means iced tea. We would call it iced tea. Cold tea as opposed to hot. And I want to say you, my friend. You, my friend, like iced tea. Te gusta el té helado. Te gusta el té helado. If I want to be emphatic, a ti te gusta el té helado. You like iced tea. Con limón, con limón. With a lemon. Okay. A ver. Quiero expresar you formally, you formally like coffee and milk. Coffee with some milk in it. You like. Bien. Formalmente, ah, le gusta el café con leche. Le gusta el co café con leche. 
¿A usted le gusta el café con leche? ¿Deben saber? Uh, because there are all kinds of vocabulary words with foods, here's another thing you might hear, at least in Spain you do, to express the idea of coffee with milk. Sometimes they have a special term for that, un cortado. I think because you cut the coffee, you cut the strength of the coffee with milk, un cortado. Okay, bien. Ah, a ver. ¿Dónde está mi ejemplo? <laughs> es un ejemplo de algo que no tenemos ahorita. Wow, here's something we haven't got right now. Oh, y perdón. I had to call that in the title and I had to do a... Fiesta ruidosa. La fiesta ruidosa. Ruidosa, ruidosa es... Ruidosa es noisy, loud, ruidosa. Ok. Uh, uh, perdón. Plural. Because for this example... We need not just a, a loud party. We need a party hearty like all of them. Many, many, many rowdy, loud, boisterous parties. Las fiestas ruidosas. We want to say young people like loud parties, noisy parties. Les gustan, les gustan, they like, les gustan las fiestas ruidosas. A los jóvenes, young people, a los jóvenes les gustan las fiestas ruidosas. Bien. Ok. Bien. Una cosita más. Uy. Aquí está mi ejemplo. Ah, las rosas. Las rosas. Son ah, en la foto. Ah, van a ver aquí. Aquí pueden ver. Here you can see. Ah, miren, look, miren, look. Las rosas rojas son mis favoritas. Ah, I like roses. I like roses. Me gustan las rosas. Me gustan las rosas. A mí me gustan las rosas. Me gustan las rosas. ¿Bien? ¿Y algo más que no podemos hacer? Something else we can't do. Another place we can't go. Till... ¿Quién sabe? Who knows? La playa. La playa. The beach. Quiero expresar, I like the beach. Me gusta la playa. Me gusta la playa. Bien. A ver. Ok. Está bien. Está bien. Uh, so we've got some examples. You may ask, what if we want to make these negative? Es muy fácil. To make it a don't like... All we do is we put the word no in front of the little pronoun. So, no me gusta la playa. No me gusta la playa. Let's work backwards. Old people don't like loud parties. Old people. A los ancianos. A ancianos, ancient ones, the elderly. A los ancianos no les gustan las fiestas ruidosas. Bien. Ejemplos negativos. Some negative examples. Por ejemplo...
no les gusta el chocolate. No les gusta el chocolate. They don't like chocolate. No les gusta el chocolate. Bien. Por ejemplo, no me gusta nadar en el océano. No me gusta nadar en el océano. Me gusta nadar en la piscina. I like to swim in the pool. Me gusta nadar en la piscina, pero, but, pero, no me gusta nadar en el océano. No me gusta. A mí no me gusta. A mí no me gusta. Bien. Ok. Por ejemplo, vamos a ver otros ejemplos y, y voy a expresar más de, en forma de una conversación. Y vamos a repasar un poquito del vocabulario de la ropa, la ropa, la ropa, clothing, ¿verdad? Uh, voy a hablar de mi hija. Mi hija se llama, mi hija, mi hija se llama, my daughter's name, mi hija se llama María Elena. María Elena es estudiante en ASU, es estudiante en la universidad. Y uh, mi hija es, mi hija es artista. Ella estudia la pintura. Su especialidad, her major, su especialidad es la pintura. Her major is painting. Y a mi hija, María Elena, le gusta pintar, le, le gusta el arte, le gusta dibujar y le gusta trabajar con los colores todo el tiempo, pero, but, pero, a ella le gusta la ropa negra. ¿Por qué? Ella lleva casi todos los días, lleva, wears, casi todos los días, lleva una blusa negra, un suéter negro, pantalones negros, faldas negras, negra, 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 todo el tiempo. Le gusta la blusa negra. No sé por qué. A ella le gustan los colores. A ella le gusta trabajar con colores. Pero cuando se viste, when she gets dressed, lleva una camiseta negra. O, oh, o, oh, oh, perdón, también gris. Negra, ropa negra, ropa gris. De vez en cuando, once in a while, ella lleva una blusa azul. Ok, pero generalmente... Estos colores tan oscuros. ¿Por qué? No sé por qué. I don't know why. María Elena tiene un vestido rojo. Lleva este vestido rojo para una, una fiesta, para la Navidad, para... Ah, lleva, la, lleva un vestido rojo en la boda de, de su primo, her cousin's wedding, en la boda de su primo, en her cousin's wedding, lleva un, un vestido rojo, muy bonito, muy bon se ve muy bien en rojo, she looks really nice in red, se ve muy bien, pero generalmente negro, 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 ok, vale, ah, a mí me gusta el rojo. El rojo es mi color favorito. Y me gusta 
me gusta llevar ropa negra. Me gusta llevar ropa negra. Me gusta llevar uh, las blusas negras. Uh, uh, me gusta llevar las, uh, 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 los zapatos negros o oh, oh, uh, oh, rojos, todo. Ok, a ver, uh, otro ejemplo, otro ejemplo. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Uh, otro ejemplo también, también. Cuando hablo de mi esposo, mi esposo no es artista, claro, mi esposo es programador, es programador y trabaja todos los días con software, escribe, mi esposo escribe software para un, una compañía muy grande, muy importante. Tiene trabajo muy importante y tiene que escribir en la computadora todos los días. Y uh, a mi esposo también le gusta caminar eh, en el desierto. Le gusta hacer ejercicio, le gusta uh, Dar una caminata, dar una caminata, give a hike. Es como se dice, take a hike. Le gusta caminar o dar una caminata en el desierto. Y a mi esposo no le gusta la moda. He does not like fashion. No le gusta no le gustan los colores vivos. A mi esposo no le gustan los colores vivos. He does not like bright colors. A mi esposo le gusta, por ejemplo, una camisa marrón o una camisa de color café. Pero le gusta. Uh, a mi esposo le gusta decir, he likes to say, le gusta decir que, ah, a mí me gusta una camiseta gris. Me gusta una camiseta gris. I like a gray t-shirt. El gris es su color favorito. El gris. Le gusta una camiseta gris. Más que una camiseta roja. Más que, more than, más que una camiseta uh, amarilla. Más que una camiseta uh, verde. No, gris, marrón, negro. Blah. Ok. Bien. A ver, yo por ejemplo, si, si, tengo que, si tengo que escoger una bufanda, una bufanda, cuando hace frío afuera, outside, uh, me gusta llevar una bufanda y me gusta esta bufanda roja. Y me gusta... Me gusta esta falda también de muchos colores con, con azul y con rayas, stripes, rayas. Uh, me gusta la bufanda de muchos colores. Uh, me gusta, me gusta la bufanda verde. Me gusta la bufanda verde. Una bufanda. Bien. Ok. Muchas veces, muchas veces, uh, aquí en Arizona, uh, es como vivir en el verano todo el tiempo. It's like living in summer all the time, ¿sí? Entonces, uh, usamos pantalones, pantalones cortos, pantalones cortos y 
me gustan, me gustan los pantalones cortos blancos. ¿Por qué blancos? Porque con blancos puedo combinar rojo, pu puedo llevar azul, azul o morado. Con, con blanco puedes, puedes llevar el color no importa, ¿sí? Verde, rojo, azul, no importa. Con blanco. Es fácil. Es fácil uh, vestirse. Sí, 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 que dress. Sí, con, con blanco. Uh, se puede usar cualquier combinación de, cualquier combinación de colores. ¿Bien? Ok. Está bien. Un repaso breve de, de la ropa, de la ropa y así es. Tenemos siete minutos. We've got just seven minutes, but I think we're going to end it there. Uh, I would like you for uh, kind of like a follow-up drill to take a look at this uh, uh, this file. This was going to be a pair practice. Um, if we get to if you if we get to meet again in April in April in April, we will use this. Uh, this file is listed in my list of materials that I sent out in the Sunday email. And it's a translation. I don't often do translation drills, but I'm just going to um, kind of preview this so you know how it works. And I would like you to kind of do this as a follow-up, as a self-test. So um, as you often do, perdón, uh, you know, the way we do this is with a partner, we fold it vertically down the center and we bounce back and forth from one example to the next. The A person has the first cue and this is a translation drill. So the A person gets an English phrase and the A person needs to figure out how to say, I like to walk. And the B person would only be looking at the B side and the B person can see the answer, but he's listening for this answer of me gusta caminar, or there's another verb for to walk, which is andar. Me gusta andar. Either one is fine. You can throw in an a mi phrase before the me gusta, or you can skip the a mi phrase. So the answer we're listening for to express I like to walk is either me gusta caminar or a mí me gusta caminar. And both of those are correct. The next cue will be on the B side. The cue will be you, and it's a familiar you, like to draw. And the answer you need to produce is te gusta dibujar or a ti te gusta dibujar. Okay, vale? So try that as a drill. Um, if we are allowed by the powers that be to get back together in Abril, in April, um, we'll kind of start with that and I would use that as a, a breakout room um, exercise to do some work. Um, I hope that this helped you out a little bit. I hope this answered your questions. I will check later to look in the chat to see if you have any questions and send out a general email answering any of those. Um, you can always uh, also email me at mab at bitner.to to ask the same questions just like you do every week. Um, fue un placer, it was a uh, pleasure. Um, I hope to see you again via video. Uh, stay safe, get in en casa, stay home if you can. I hope you've got the kind of job where you can stay home. Uh, don't go out. Get in en casa, stay at home. Uh, cuídense, take care of yourselves. 
stay well y nos vemos. Hasta luego.